26 years mm -hmm. and um, I ran arts and craft at um, May's Cottage before I came here mm -hmm. and um, it was very successful and the council asked me when they um, opened the Community Arts Centre if I would come over here and do something similar. So I came over and we started with one table and um, one customer a week and um, it just grew from there. Yeah. Well, um, at Mays Cottage we used to have the tourist buses come for Devonshire teas and coffees and that. And um, when I came um, here, the coaches said, well, Kathy, if you get morning tea up and running, we'll follow you. So they did. Um, and um, the word spread from there. Um, the customers soon learnt about it. We used to go to different shopping centres and advertise ourselves and sell our products in the centre. Um, until people got to know about it. We don't need to do that anymore because it's, um, it's just gone. And we have a motto to run our business. You make a little profit over and over again. Rather than be greedy, make a big profit and never see your visitors again. When we first started, all the shops around that um, had craft and everything said, you'll never last the distance, mm -hmm. dearie. Um, do you know why they... And they're all long gone and we're still here because they were greedy. Something we could sell for five fifty and make a good profit, they had for fifteen fifty. Mm. So I mean, the customer, you've got to listen to the customers. You've got to um, realise what um, area you're, sh you're selling to. Um, and we have people come from northern New South Wales, Gold Coast, North Coast. We've even had coaches from Bundaberg on their way through to Melbourne um, stop in. They've heard about us. So a very um, well established facility. Yes, and word of mouth is our best advertising and I feel that's good because if somebody has loved what they've seen and gone away and spoke about it, that's what we're after. You're all about and the experience. Yeah, and it brings the um, tourist dollar to Logan City. So that's how it works. Okay, well the butter factory was built in 1906 and the first butter was produced in 1907. And um, because we were the second largest city in Queensland, um, Brisbane gave, uh, the state and federal government gave us a bicentenary grant to celebrate our bicentenary. So the council decided to buy the old butter factory and turn it into a community arts centre. And it was built in 1987 to 88, and it opened on the 27th of February, 1988. Well, when you're um, a farmer and you've got your butter to deliver, um, you can't always take the time to truck it in. So they used to put it on the nearest rail mm -hmm. and um, it would offload um, here. They'd put down a ramp and all the um, milk cans were delivered in here with the cream. They had a cream tester. He would taste it. That would tell him whether it was choice, first, second or third grade cream and sometimes it had little furry creatures floating in it, so it wasn't always the nicest of jobs. And um, uh, then the egg would be um, pasteurised in the theatre, held overnight in the arts and craft floor, and the first job the butter maker did when he came to work was to open up the valves and let the cream run downstairs to our three stainless steel butter churns. Mm. We had 50 box, 40 box and 30 box size. Boxes were the old wooden butter boxes, mm -hmm. you're probably too young to remember, but um, that's how they used to transport the butter in those days. Mm -hmm. And they weighed 56 pound and two ounces. And all of that, it took 40 to 45 minutes to turn that whole vat of cream into butter. And the waste product was buttermilk. Mm -hmm. And the buttermilk was stored in our ballet studio and pumped underground to the piggery across the road. And of course the pigs were very well fed little porkers used to win first prize. Oh, wow. England in 1929 held a worldwide competition for the best butter in the world mm -hmm. and Kingston won. So they were very good at their trade. So world renowned. That's right. Mm -hmm. And in the um, room behind um, here, it was put into the um, boxes mm -hmm. and stamped Southern Queensland Dairy Co-op Kingston. And in the dressing rooms for our theatre, it was wrapped in one pound and a half pound mm -hmm. for our domestic market. All of that was put onto the train and taken into the Hamilton coal stores next to the wharf, ready for distribution throughout the world by ship and road and train throughout Australia.
Wow. They made butter here at peak production until 1959 when Peters took over because everyone was told to eat margarine. Butter's mm. no good for you. Mm. Of course, 50 years later, you've got to go back to natural butter because margarine's going to kill you anyway. Um, but um, they added baker's cheese and cottage cheese as well, trying to keep the business viable. But on the 15th of April, 1983, it ceased production altogether. Wow. And the vans moved in. And what they couldn't steal, they smashed, they wrote all over, made such an eyesore of the building. But we got a very nice grant, three quarters of a million dollars from the state and federal government. And um, that's what it took to turn this in. Today, you couldn't even buy the land for that. Um, so it was a really good investment. Gary Keller was the um, CEO of the council at that time, and this was his concept. Um, so he brought it to fruition, and um, it's, it's just a wonderful, it's got a lovely feel, it's quiet. Visitors can come by rail if they can't come by train, uh, by bus um, or car, so it's really um, a benefit. And about five years later, the um, museum opened up, and um, people have found old butter boxes under their spare bed in the back room. They found old milk cans and brought them in, so other people can enjoy the past as well. One year of restoration. Yes, they had um, community workers um, in those days as well to help, so that offset some of the cost. And the totem pole outside, that was carved at Expo, mm -hmm. and it's the largest freestanding sculpture in the whole of Australia. And it's carved from one single dead tree, an Australian teak. And it was carved by Shane Stevens, who was born in New Zealand, to a Fijian mother and an English father. So by his heritage, mm -hmm. you can see the style of his carving. And the theme of our pole is all our endangered species, whether it be an animal, man or bird. And the snake winding its way from the base to the top represents a strangulation hole we put on our own environment. And Shane used 15 different sized chainsaws to carve the pole. The other little building in the grounds used to be the only solar powered barbecue in the world, but it's a prototype. Ours was the first. Um, so um, now everybody can use it all over the world. So, And the little yellow house at the front gate, that used to be the paymaster's office here for the butter factory and it's a caretaker's residence and he lives on site and is responsible for the security and maintenance of the building and the grounds. Lots of history all around. Yes. There? And I mean, we've got the largest freestanding sculpture in Australia. We had the best butter in the world. Um, and upstairs we have the best arts and craft in Australia. Cheapest prices and the friendliest staff. That's what our customers tell us. That's what's written in our, um, in our comments book. And that's why they keep coming back. They come for the arts and craft, and then they can have a Devonshire tea or coffee for $3 a head, which is an endless cup of tea or coffee. Um, have a look at the museum. We've um, now got a lift, um, courtesy of um, the Logan City Council and um, the Rotary, I think it was. Oops, I'm not sure whether it was Rotary or Lions now, but I think it was Rotary. Um, yes, it was Rotary. And, um, that helps the um, disabled to get upstairs. Oh, and they enjoy themselves. They have a really good time. Yeah. Well, see, the totem pole, it was carved by Shane Stevens, who's world famous. He did the world, um, the Hawaii Peace Pole. He's done all the carvings in the state forest in um, America. And he's very famous for the ones he's done, done over in Europe. And he actually came here um, January last year, and he came to check on all his um, totem poles. And he was so proud of the fact that ours is in um, prime position at the front mm. and is in perfect order because the one in Toowoomba got eaten by white ants. The other one that um, he carved was stolen. Mm. So ours is the only one left that he did at Expo and he was really pleased to see that we have looked after it. And as I said to him, well, that's because we're Logan City and we look after what we have. So sometimes in the coaches that we have, um, the, and I give them the talk on our history, the lady will come up to me and she'll say, my father was the manager here, or we sold cream to the butter factory, and all different stories about um, the things that they got up to when they were here, like coming in um, with school tours, you know, and um, all dipping their fingers in the butter and tasting it and all these sorts of things, you know. So, But it's nice um, for people to have a connection to history and then see it. 
They'll come out of the museum and say, I can't believe it. The things in the museum I'm still using in my kitchen. Because years ago, things were made to last. These days, you get lucky, you get 12 months out of things and got to throw them away. So um, that's another good point too. Nostalgia, it, you know, yeah. brings back good memories for people. Mm. And with the solar power barbecue, people can come and have a picnic out in the grounds and, you know, it doesn't cost anything. They can sit out there and enjoy, they can come in. and um, We have very clean um, facilities, which people often comment on. And um, have a look in the museum and go up to the arts and crafts.